bomb coming from remote uh, places and they are not getting the right type of education what is required and this policy has also taken cognizance of that and policy has recommended that uh, um, by uh, putting a lot of emphasis on indian ethos and indian culture and we can create a society which will be equitable and very vibrant uh, so that everybody will get opportunity to education and they will get quality education once they get quality education definitely uh, it will help in um, the development of uh, all other areas in all other areas and the most important thing if you look at the vision of the policy that uh, this time policy puts a more emphasis on development of fundamental duties we all know we are fighting for our rights we are conscious of our rights but uh, now policy has put emphasis on development of fundamental duties fundamental duties and constitutional values of course 86 policy also put lot of emphasis on uh, constitutional values and this policy has put lot of emphasis on uh, development of fundamental duties because that is required if we can make our children conscious of their uh, duties and responsibilities then no need of fighting for the rights so that is that that is the other way and that is why policy is putting a lot of emphasis on development of fundamental duties and constitutional values and the last one uh, what uh, we are discussing now the focus is on sustainable development focus is on global citizenship focus is on, on human rights that this, this is the this is the vision of the policy because if you look at the vision, because it uh, talks about Indian ethos, it talks about equitable, vibrant knowledge society, it talks about um, creation of uh, it, uh, the development of fundamental duties and ultimately uh, global citizenship and sustainable development. It is in line of, uh, with uh, the goal for uh, because of the sustainable development, because we are talking about uh, equitable, inclusive education and lifelong education. And uh, it is not the first policy in our country. This is the third policy. First policy we had in 68, 1968. Second policy in 86. And before that, we had three education commission. So, and also we have developed four national uh, curriculum framework um, to implement uh, these policies. Uh, first curriculum framework was developed in the year 1975. Second one in 88. Third one in 2000. Fourth one in 2005. And now we are developing four national uh, curriculum framework to implement the school education in our country because earlier we had two national curriculum framework one for teacher education one for school education and you'll be happy to know that this time we are going to have two more national curriculum framework it is in the process one is on early childhood education and care and uh, the other one is on adult education because in sustainable development we are talking about lifelong education inclusive education equitable education so adult education is also an important area that we have to improve the quality of life of our people that is why policy has taken care of that and we are coming out with four national curriculum framework just to implement this nep 2020 at the grassroots and uh, this is and uh, keeping in view this this policy has recommended a structure uh, that actually currently we have uh, 12 years of schooling 10 plus 2 pattern of education but policy has recommended 15 years of schooling 15 years means uh, actually uh, three more years have been added uh, at the early stage that will be the foundation stage three years of preschool plus class one and two this will be one stage that is the foundational stage then the second one is the preparatory stage class three four and five then the middle school that uh, six seven eight that was there that will be there then the last stage for the school education is the secondary education that's class 9, 10, 11, 12. This will be the secondary education. Earlier it was higher secondary and secondary. Now it will be the secondary education. And a lot of flexibility in this structure, a lot of flexibility has been recommended. And just uh, I would like to highlight the focus since uh, many commissions, many committee and many policies we have already formulated. But the problem is in implementation. That, but in India, we our policies, all the policies are good, no doubt about that. But uh, we face a lot of difficulties in implementing this policy. And uh, now we, we, we are trying our best to implement this policy, particularly for school education. When NCF will be ready, then we'll go for new textbooks. We'll develop new textbooks, syllabus, and then we'll implement it school stage. But we have already initiated I mean, some other parts that mean teacher education, the in service 
teacher training program is going on and other things that uh, we are making ourselves ready to implement the policy some initiative has already also taken place not only in school education but also in higher education and teacher education so this is the background but uh, when policy when we are talking about the sustainable development actually uh, we we have to provide quality education and uh, i'm very happy to mention that our focus is on the uh, early childhood education and care because when three years of preschool will be integrated with class one and two this will be one stage foundation stage and uh, we are going to have a separate national curriculum framework for this stage and uh, we and in it has been mentioned in the policy that uh, more than 80 percent of brain development takes place during this stage and uh, actually we we are not taking care of that particularly the children who are coming from rural area tribal area slum and from the deprived section they they are directly coming to the school they are joining at the class one if we can provide them right type of education though there is provision onward is are there and uh, they are taking care of health and nutrition part but along with that if we can take care of the education part we can appoint some um, 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 the teachers or who will help in providing education, we can strengthen the Anganwadis and we can introduce this preschool uh, along with the um, uh, school. Uh, then that will that it will bring about a change in the entire system of education. That that is that is why now we are strong, we are going to strengthen this one. And uh, what is up to, in the current scenario, if you see in our country, that means those who are providing this preschool education and actually they are extending class one to preschool. That is that is another that, um, that uh, um, problem in our country. Because those who are providing that their curriculum is not uh, well matched to their cognitive level, and uh, that that is why what policy has recommended that the right type of curriculum once the curri curriculum framework is ready, will come out with the uh, right type of uh, um, materials. So though we have developed in NCRT, we have developed some materials for preschool education, and particularly for three years uh, preschool uh, curriculum. But now uh, when it will everything will be finalized, definitely we will come out with a um, very good curriculum and uh, um, good materials and that, that, that will match that will be stage specific age specific and uh, our job is not to teach alphabet at the early stage so we have to make them uh, emotionally and socially ready and so that they can uh, continue with their school education that is the most important thing we are going to take care of at the early stage another most important thing for the uh, keeping in view the sustainable development what this policy has recommended that is the mother tongue that uh, it was there earlier also it was there but this policy has recommended that uh, particularly at the early stage uh, our children should be taught through their mother tongue because what problem we are facing in india because children who are coming from tribal area uh, we are not providing uh, the, them the textbook in their language our textbooks we develop in regional language so, so for example odisha is a state we have tribal population in mp also tribal many, many states are, we have tribal population but when we develop textbooks we develop textbooks in regional language so that is that, that is why tribal children are facing a lot of difficulties and sometimes they are leaving school because of this region and policy has um, uh, made it clear that at the early stage they will learn through the mother tongue and the textbooks will be developed in their language we are going to use their language and when they will be provided this opportunity, they will get opportunity to learn through their language, through their mother tongue, they will not leave school and that education will be very uh, comfortable and they will feel comfortable and uh, they can continue with the uh, higher education that they will go for higher and when they will come to the higher stage, they can learn other language. They can learn Hindi, they can learn regional language, they can learn English and other languages, it is open. But in the early stage, that the, the policy has taken care of. And another most important thing, what policy has taken care of, that we are going to provide textbook with local flavor, that, that we are not doing now, in NCRT developed textbook. Uh, and when we develop textbook, we, we, it is really difficult to take care of the local history, local geography. And we put something which is nationally important. But uh, we, we don't give due weightage to the local history, local geography, local culture. But uh, on what policy has recommended that we are going to give local flavor to the textbook. That means local geography, local history uh, will be added to the uh, textbook so that at the early stage they will learn through their language and uh, they will know about their culture, they will know about uh, their geography. 
their history, everything. So that means we are going to uh, bring out a change in the entire system of education. This is the beginning. If the foundation is strong, then definitely everything will be all right. Then another thing that to strengthen this early childhood education and care, policy has already taken care of that policy recommended to set up a commission uh, for, for this literacy and numeracy. Uh, for the development of literacy and numeracy because you might be knowing what is happening in uh, our country that uh, many times it is coming in the newspaper and we have also conducted survey that class six children class seven children are unable to solve the problem of class three they are unable to read the text of uh, class two or class three that means there is a gap that means that they 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 are not ready they, they have not developed their uh, required literacy and numeracy skills that one policy had recommended to set up a committee and government of India has already set up a commission that Nipun Bharat and they will also take care of the, this aspect, the development of literacy and numeracy so that we can overcome these issues and we can make our foundation very strong and at the early stage children will get the right type of education as per their and development as per their developmental need, as per their need and requirement, so that, uh, that they will not leave the school and education will be very meaningful for them. So that is that is the first step that what policy has recommended and now we are going to implement the, that. And once this uh, curriculum framework is ready, then we will come out with the textbooks and uh, all the materials and uh, also training uh, for the teachers, everything uh, will be done. So it will be, it will bring about a change and definitely it will help in the sustainable development. The second thing that means when our children will go to preparatory stage, now we are putting a lot of emphasis on rote learning because you know um, um, what is happening in our country. Uh, we teachers feel that our job is to cover the syllabus. Our job is just to help the students to secure good mark in uh, uh, exam. But, the, the, but uh, really what is happening, they are not developing, developing the basic skills and competencies and now we are talking of uh, 21st century learning skills. They should uh, develop the problem solving ability, creativity, and critical thinking, communication skills, etc. But actually, practically, we are not doing that. We are putting a focus on the covering syllabus and just helping them to secure good mark in exam. That is why you will find a gap. We conducted a national achievement survey in 17, 2017, and again, another national achievement survey has been conducted in 2021. If you compare the score, what they are securing in board exam, and what they are securing in national achievement survey, so there is a wide gap. Why it is happening? Because in 17, 2017, we came out with the learning outcome. Learning outcome, as we have identified the competencies, and we made our national achievement survey competency best. And uh, when we made it on competency best in 17, uh, we went to the district level and we conducted the survey, and it was found that uh, when children uh, in class three, they, they, particularly the class three children, the, they, they are performing better as compared to class five children. And if class five children are performing better as compared to class eight. Class eight, eight children are better as compared to class 10. That means when they are going to high, higher stage, that learning level is coming down. And if you look at the average score, both the survey, 17 and 21, both are almost same. In class three, the average score is around 60. It is 60%. In class five, it is around 50%. In class 8, it is less than 50%. Uh, the, it is around 45%. In class 10, it is around 40%. Uh, 40%. But in board exam, if you see they are securing 100, 95, 99, uh, 85, like this, there is a gap. Because we have taken large sample. It is not that we have taken small sample. In 17, it was 22, like 2.2 million. And now it is around 3.3 million. Uh, we have gone to the every district of the country. And this is this is the scenario. That means what we are doing, we are just helping our students to acquire knowledge. The way of, they are acquiring content mastery. They are not uh, acquiring the basic skills and competencies what is required um, for them so that they can face the different challenge in their life and they can um, uh, do something better. Now that is that is why what we are going to do. We in, in this preparatory stage actually we are going not going to make it memory based. Uh, that policy has discarded that part, and even our NCF 2005 also put emphasis on that. And now we are going to make it more participatory, more collaborative, so that they will participate, they will work in group, and they will develop the basic skills and competencies what is required that we are going to do. 
then uh, when they will come to the middle stage most most important thing from the point of view of sustainable development because we are going to introduce vocational education from class 6 onwards that is that is that is a very significant thing that uh, what, what the policy has recommended if you see the current scenario what is happening in our country we have vocational education and we start vocational education for, from class 9 onwards 9 10 11 12 and four years and during these four years we provide we give them vocational education that if you see the total hour it is 1000 hour and if you compare if you compare this with other country particularly i'll compare it to south korea because we have some collaboration and we have we have studied that system in uh, south korea they give 4000 hours in india we give uh, only 1000 hour and here vocational education is a separate stream and uh, if you see the data what what is there in the policy only five percent of students uh, coming through formal vocational education in india and whereas 96 percent of students are coming through formal vocation, um, vocational education in south korea and uh, in germany it is 75 percent in usa it is 52 percent in india is five percent that the data shows that that is there in the policy that is that is why what we are going to do uh, particularly uh, to improve the quality of education and to develop the skills and competency we are going to introduce vocational education from class six onwards when uh, that means in the class six they will be uh, familiar with the different types of vocation and they will visit uh, the local community that policy has recommended that they will come to the school uh, without back some days uh, around 10 15 days, 10 days what they have recommended they will come to the school without school bag they will visit look, look, with the um, local community they visit the local community interact with the local expert and learn from the uh, locality what is available in the lo locality what type of vocation available they will have some exposure some experience local experts also visit school so by doing that what we are going to we are not only going to develop the skills and competencies but we are going to develop uh, a very positive attitude what is vocational education now everybody looked on vocational education parents teachers everybody and we, we feel vocational education means for the students who are unable to perform well in other areas so that that is our impression that that is why this policy will bring about a change in our vocational education system and ultimately it will develop the dignity of labor that that is why from class six onwards vocational education is going to be introduced and it will be an integral part of general education. There will be no separate stream for vocational education. And there will be opportunity for vertical mobility. After completion of school, they can go to higher education and they can um, continue their the vocation, what they have acquired. And it is compulsory for every student uh, that every student has to complete uh, at least one vocation uh, before completion of school education. It is, it is mandatory. And every student has to learn every student has to uh, have some basic skills and competency at least in one vocation so that is that is that is the recommendation of the policy because in particularly we all know that india is going to be the youngest country in the world and we have to take advantage of this demographic dividend that is the most important thing that we are going to do and that that is why we have to introduce vocational education at the early stage it will be an integral part of our general education and required skills and competencies keeping in view their aptitude uh, the, the, that is to when we are exposing students to the vocation, different vocation at the early stage, they they will when they will come to the class nine, they will select vocation of their choice as per their aptitude, as per their interest. That is that is most important and what is locally available and locally relevant. So that we are going to make it more effective, uh, uh, particularly this vocational education. And this policy will bring about a change in this domain and uh, uh, definitely it will help in sustainable development, no doubt about that. Then when our children will go to secondary stage, what policy has recommended? And policy has recommended there will be no hard separation. There will be no hard separation because now, uh, but one thing, uh, what we say, this is curricular, this is extracurricular, this is co-curricular. That means there will be no hard separation between curricular, co-curricular and extracurricular because our focus is on holistic development. There will be no watertight compartment between science, social science, that means this is science, this is art, this is commerce, like that. And student can select subject of their choice as per their interest, as per their attitude, as per their aptitude. So that that way, that flexibility we are going to introduce at the secondary stage. 
and a lot of uh, new subjects are going to be introduced and a lot of options we are talking about multiple intelligence but all the time we are putting emphasis on development of logical and mathematical intelligence <clears throat> that is why at the secondary stage lot of flexibility no watertight compartment and new subjects will be you know, introduced and students will get opportunity to select subject of their choice and definitely it will uh, will have uh, many challenge because we have to prepare child teachers for that we have to introduce new subjects so so many things are there but it will bring a change in the entire system of school education and that will that education will be very effective and sustainable that is that, that 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 is the recommendation of the policy and most important thing that this curriculum and we all know what is happening because our curriculum is overloaded we all, all feel the curriculum is overloaded because a lot of content load is there and policy has recommended that curriculum load will be less and uh, if you go through the chapter 4 of the policy that uh, particularly three things I, i would like to highlight that curriculum pedagogy and assessment because the, what uh, policy has recommended the curriculum load will be less load means the content load will be less and focus will be on development of skills and competencies when content load will be less then children will get time to uh, discuss to share their experiences to exhibit their performance that means the talent what they have so that means by doing the by reducing content and making this curriculum competency best we can really help our children to develop the 21st century learning skills that is that is required now so that that the, the um, nep 2020 has recommended curriculum will be competency based examination will be competency based and more focus will be on development of skills and competencies among the children then so far as the uh, pedagogy is concerned because uh, that is the most important how curriculum uh, will be transacted in now uh, our school system we all know it is almost one way transaction because our focus is to cover the syllabus and if syllabus is covered then we are very happy our our, our job is over because we have completed our syllabus but actually the how can it be it's uh, we all know we know the latest pedagogy it should be child centered and uh, children should enjoy learning it should be meaningful there should be more social interaction because what learning theory suggests that if there is more socialist interaction then there is better learning that, that is why what uh, we are going to do in the pedagogy mother of policy put a lot of emphasis on experiential learning experiential learning that means they should they should be exposed to variety of experiences and the exposure they should get a different type of exposure so that they can uh, learn from their experience they can observe the situation they can formulate their own hypothesis they can uh, discuss among the um, themselves that when in the within the group and they can verify their own hypothesis they can construct their own knowledge so that that is why when you are talking about the pedagogy that means it will be experiential learning and uh, the, the, the since we have conducted many uh, experiments in our country and now we are putting lot of emphasis on art integrated learning it has two purpose one is we will preserve our art and culture that is that is the and that number two our learning that means our classroom will be very vibrant and uh, very joyful student will enjoy because when we will inter- integrate um, the visual art um, uh, the dance music uh, drama or theater that means our teaching learning will be very meaningful and that uh, we have already uh, conducted some experiment in different part of the country we have developed the guidelines and policy has taken care of that and policy has recommended we are going to make this our learning more joyful more meaningful and more relevant and uh, side by side we we also uh, we are going to preserve our art and culture so that that is why focus is more on art integrated learning similarly focus is on sport integrated learning because um, uh, we know all of the focus is on development of our uh, cognitive domain and particularly uh, so far as the multiple intelligence is concerned um, mostly we are focusing on development of logical and mathematical knowledge and that that, that is why now we are focus is on um, games and sports it is going to be sport integrated so that uh, we will give due weightage to physical education that is if our children are physically uh, healthy then they ultimately they will be mentally sound so that is why that that also we are going to integrate um, with our pedagogy uh, sport integrated learning then ict we all know uh, during this covid period we have taken advantage of uh, ict and uh, now also we are taking advantage 
and that, that, that is that is the our focus is on art integrated ict integrated pedagogy it is not we should use ict as a medium but we should uh, use ict as a tool just to uh, interact to share our experiences with others so it will help our student to have better collaboration better sharing better cooperation so that that will really uh, help them to learn effectively and similarly our focus is on storytelling based pedagogy so these are the pedagogical like you see uh, the pedagogical aspect in the policy that this is a focus because ultimately we are going to make our classroom more vibrant and the students when students will come to school without school bag some days that means they they will visit the, the locality and we are going to strengthen the school community relationship and ultimately the, the our system will be sustainable because uh, now there is a gap between school and community community feels this is the job of the government to take care of the school but by doing this uh, we, we now policy are recommended to strengthen the school community relationship if community takes the responsibility then definitely uh, there will be change in our uh, education system it will improve the quality of education the most important thing that uh, that is assessment what policy has recommended we may bring about change in curriculum we may make curriculum competency based we may introduce change in pedagogy it may be experiential learning art integrated learning sport integrated learning etc but if there is no change in the process of assessment nothing will happen that is why policy has put lot of emphasis on assessment because uh, if we ask same question if we conduct the assessment what we are doing now then whatever we may do change will not take place that is why now what policy has recommended policy has recommended that, that uh, students should be involved in the process of assessment or now students are not involved in the process of assessment why students will be involved because uh, we uh, we are going to uh, make them autonomous learn and let they should know because earlier if the when the, there is now there is a paradigm shift in the learning and earlier assessment was not an integral part of teaching learning it was separate it was isolated but now you know, keeping in view the constructivist pedagogy now if we look at the assessment assessment is an integral part of teaching learning students should not wait for three months to get the feedback because uh, what we do in um, traditional way at the end we conduct the assessment that uh, conduct the test we call it summative and now when we are using three modes it is assessment of learning in between we are conducting test formative assessment that we all know formative and it is after completion of one unit or it may be after three months two months and after that we give feedback that we give remedial measure and that helps the student to develop their content mastery but now our focus has been shifted from content mastery to competency mastery when we are talking about competency mastery that means they should get feedback immediately but not only from the teacher from their friends so we have to bring about change in our system if we can involve students in the process of assessment then assessment will be treated as learning that now our focus is more on assessment as learning not on assessment of learning assessment for learning but assessment as learning let student reflect on their own learning let student uh, know their strength as well as the weakness that is that is where now policy put emphasis on assessment as learning uh, and when we are talking of assessment as learning this is an integral part of teaching learning and this is a continuous process and when you say continuous process that the now students are going to be involved there will be self assessment they themselves will make their own assessment then there will be assessment uh, by the uh, by the peer group and there will be assessment by the teacher and even parents may be involved that means we are going to make it more transparent more holistic and uh, we are going to make it 360 degree and that is why what policy are recommended that there will be holistic progress card now our, in our school we have progress card and in the progress card only the mark what they have secured in different school subject that is reflected but now when there will be holistic progress card not only their mark their socio personal qualities their leadership quality how they are taking initiative how they are helping others and their performance in sports performance in music performance in dance and in all other areas all everything will be included in this everything will be reflected in the holistic progress card that we are going to develop and that will be implemented in our school system 
that means when everything will be included then due weightage that means all the domains of the personality will get its due weightage so that is that is that that is the recommendation of the policy though it was there we all know education means it is holistic it is all around development but to implement this the policy has recommended there will be holistic progress card all domains of the personality will be assessed through this holistic progress card will be reflected so we are going to uh, develop this portfolio and this uh, rubric that that will also definitely because all the time we are using test that is you have shifted focus from measurement to assessment it is not formal along with the testing techniques all the non testing techniques will be used it, it, it may be subjective but that is relevant that is required to assess the socio personal qualities um, that, that is why we are going to make it more holistic and this change particularly in the field of assessment will bring about change in the entire system of education and similarly keeping not only this all these in the school education because uh, only uh, policy can be implemented effectively if our teachers are trained properly if you can produce good teachers then definitely we can implement our policy that is why policy has recommended that uh, now after up to 2030 we will have different types of teacher education program now we in our country we have elementary teacher training program and when we are talking of the secondary we have two year um, uh, B.Ed program after graduation and also four year integrated program but policy has put a lot of emphasis on four year integrated program because we are talking about the multidisciplinary approach it is not math pedagogy science uh, science pedagogy social science pedagogy or language pedagogy that is going to help because we already we have shifted our focus to from content to competency so that is why we are talking about the multidisciplinary pedagogy when we are talking about the competency competency is not limited to a particular subject and now we are going to make it more multidisciplinary that is why what policy has recommended so we are going to have teacher education institution and uh, which will be multidisciplinary in nature and uh, focus is more on development of this four year integrated program so that we can improve the quality of education of course this uh, two year b.a program one year b.a program will be there those will be completing three years graduation for them a two year b.a program will be there those will be completing four year graduation uh, because uh, we are going to bring about change in higher education for them one year b.a program will be there ultimately teacher education uh, the uh, institution the multidisciplinary institutions will run this four year integrated program those who will be running this four year integrated program they will get opportunity to run this one year b.a and two year b.a program that means we are going to bring about in teacher education program similarly we are going to bring about change in higher education program multiple entry multiple exit and a lot of um, freedom to the students to sub select uh, the um, subject of their choice and um, we are going to have one regulatory body that is most important thing we are now different regulatory body now we are going to have one higher education commission and with the four verticals so that i think uh, this pilot it was initiated in next uh, parliament session it may be passed and it will also bring about a change in the higher education uh, pattern and we are going to make it international standard so by doing all these my point is by doing all these what we are going to we are going to make our system uh, more vibrant and uh, we we want to improve the quality of education not only in school education but also in higher education in teacher education in all other areas so our uh, focus is on holistic so if we can do that definitely there will be change in our country and our country will develop because if we can uh, put uh, more, make our foundation stage more effective then definitely all other system uh, will be automatically effective that is that is why a lot of focus on this and this and particularly adult education those who are illiterate we we have to bring about change in their quality of life if we can bring about change in their quality of life then definitely it will help in sustainable development that that is for the that we are going to develop another uh, separate national curriculum framework for adult education so all these are the recommendation of uh, um, the policy um, keeping in view the sustainable development because we are discussing it in the context of sustainable development so if um, there will be change in education and uh, then definitely there will be change in the society in all other areas of the society and uh, ultimately we can prepare good citizen not only for this country uh, we can prepare good human being and ultimately global citizen that is that is the that is the vision of the policy because in the vision it has mentioned not only good citizen for this country we have to develop global citizen because that is our philosophy indian philosophy vasudeva kutumbakam whole world is one family that is why we have to develop good human being 
and then ultimately they will be global citizen and they will not only think uh, about their country they will think about others so that is that is our philosophy so that is the main vision of the policy so now uh, we are going to implement and on, in some areas we have already initiated the work once it is implemented definitely it will have a very significant effect on the quality of education and ultimately it will help the development of our society and not only in uh, national development so that is that is your focus and we'll have better international relationship because uh, if all uh, this global citizen concept will develop definitely we will have better international relationship and we can do something for others that is our philosophy that is uh, that that is there uh, in indian culture that is why policy is putting a lot of emphasis on indian ethos and the system should be rooted through this um, in, on this uh, indian ethos indian culture indian tradition etc so thank you very much uh, for giving me this time i think i have taken more time now it is going to be 7:30 So thank you very much for your presence here and uh, for the opportunity